So thank you, Mujiz, for the introduction and for having me here. Um, I'm very excited to share you know, our story of where we started, uh, where we're at now, and kind of how we got there, and some of my advice for uh, both selling to customers and pitching your business and you know, the different kinds of people that you're going to have to essentially sell uh, your product or service or yourself to. So yeah, so like you said, I own a company called Chin Treats. It's an innovative health food company, and our mission is really to take what Mother Nature already gives us fruits and vegetables and then be creative in the way that we manufacture them to come out with new innovative products that aren't yet on the shelf. So Nice Green is our signature product line. We have three different flavors and it is the world's first and only frozen dessert that's made entirely from fruit. So this one, which is our very first round of packaging actually, um, is our banana ice cream. One ingredient is just bananas, nothing else added. Uh, and like I said, we're the only people who have uh, yet been able to manufacture that kind of product without adding anything to it. And I actually got my start really in pitch competition. So I was at Trent University. I was in business as a varsity athlete. I was a cross country runner. Uh, and I was also a competitive cheerleader. So I was all about health and fitness and nutrition. And it's actually something that I found online. People were basically taking bananas, freezing them, and then making like a soft serve. And I thought that if people could buy it in the grocery store when they're doing their weekly shopping, that they would love it. So that was, you know, the concept and the idea. And I quickly realized why nobody else was making the product. It's very hard to manufacture um, without adding anything to it. So we have in Pure a competition somewhat like this, and it's called uh, Bear's Lair. Basically, you pitch to a panel of judges. Uh, they ask you questions, and you have the opportunity to win resources. Uh, for us, it was you know office space, different mentorship. Uh, there was a cash element to the one that I did as well. And what that really did was give me some kind of validation that people liked the product. Uh, some of the judges who you know have experience thought it was a good idea, and it's really how we got started. So after that, we did about a full year of R and D on the engineering and manufacturing side to figure out how to actually make this product uh, without adding anything to it. And we sold just locally to health food stores and cafes to make some money while we're trying to figure out how we're going to make this commercially viable. Uh, so we brought it, you know, Joanne's Place um, is a health food store in Cuba. They were my first retailer. I brought my product to them in uh, like a little Tupperware container and I told them I would eventually have packaging and this is why I thought people would love it and it's local and it's much easier to sell, you know, around you on a smaller scale. Um, so that's how we got our start and then we did a full year trying to figure out the manufacturing process. And I had went to school for business, I uh, was very involved in athletics, but I had never done anything with engineering or operations in manufacturing. And you know, if you start a company, you're going to come into that over and over again where you, don't, you have a problem that you do not know how to solve. And if you're doing something innovative, there's probably not a rule book somewhere for how to do it. Nobody else has made my product, so there's no template to go off of. So a lot of it I taught myself in terms of how normal ice cream manufacturing works and what all of these pieces of equipment do and how can I use that to get to where I want to go. And we did it on a smaller scale. Um, and then I also had advisors at the time through the Innovation Cluster, which is a business incubator. Uh, they connected me with my lead mentor and my eventually my lead investor who had launched Caterade and Snapple here in Canada. So how that experience. And I connected with uh, manufacturing experts as well. So I could at least fill in the gaps for what I didn't know. But it was mostly trial and error. And obviously, we couldn't build a facility. So there are resources all around us. For us, we rented a commercial kitchen a few days a week while we were kind of building ourselves up. And then uh, after that, we have now moved into a co-packer. So we're able to build that up as we go. And in that year of R&D, we secured uh, our first customer, which was Whole Foods. So I got that meeting by calling and emailing them over and over again, uh, telling them that I had a perfect product and wanted to come in. And they're uh, based here in Toronto, not here in Toronto, but in the area. And so I got that meeting and I presented my product to them. All I had was this one flavor, just the banana. And you know, luckily the buyer was not very intimidating. Because it's Whole Foods, he had a beard, he had like a comfy sweater, he had jeans on. So it was a very nice intro into selling to buyers. Uh, now that I've sold to, you know, Lala's and Sylvie's is a lot more rigid than that, but I really did have, you know, a perfect Whole Foods product. It's just bananas, nothing else added, and he saw that. Um, and then what he told me was that 
you know, it's a great product and I would love to sell it, but I can't just put, you know, one flavor out on the shelf. You know, one product by itself would get lost in the store uh, and not move very well. So I need you to have at least three. And in my head, I was like, well, I really wanted this deal, now I'm not getting it, and, you know, it's not a good fit, and I was really counting on this. But what my mouth said was, we already have three flavors, I can bring them to the next meeting. <laughs> so I told them, we, you know, tested, we have mango banana, and we have strawberry banana, which are ideas that I had previously thought about, but did not yet actually have products for. So I told them not to worry, like, our next meeting, I'll bring them, and then we can just go ahead. So I went away, and I came up with uh, the other two flavors, and I brought them to our next meeting. Um, which ended up being great. So he, we got the listing, which took, you know, you think something's going to happen very quickly, but it ended up taking, I would say, six months from when we got it to when it actually went out on shelves. And that was a really big indicator for us, like having Whole Foods sign on. It's not by any means a lot of money. Whole Foods is six stores in Ontario, seven out west. So Whole Foods Canada by itself will never make me a lot of money, but I use that name that connected me with my first distributor, um, which is the best way to go. If you, you know, have questions or you want to work with a distributor, getting um, an account or a store to get your product or list your product first and then have them introduce you is the best way to go. Same with if you have, um, like we didn't know which distributor to go with, and the best way to, you know, really figure that out is to ask a store who they like to work with the best because we figured it out along the road that we were not working with um, the industry preferred distributor and nobody really liked to do business with us. So we changed it down the road, but <laughs> that's how we got you know, our first distributor. Um, and what we really did with that was we leveraged the Whole Foods name. We went to our first trade show. All of these little independent health food stores were there. Some bigger ones were there, but we were very small, so they didn't really care to come and see what we had. Uh, but everybody who came by, we told them, you know, we were listed with Whole Foods, and it was its own little stamp of credibility in our space. Um, and we launched June 2017, so about 15, 16 months ago now, with Whole Foods uh, and a few independents. And since then, we've grown to be coast to coast here in Canada. So starting just in Ontario with Whole Foods and some independents, and then we were a part of Metro's local program, so we got in just with a region for them. Um, and we kept, you know, leveraging. Every time we got a new account or a new milestone, we would leverage that when we pitched. Uh, so we grew out to Western Canada uh, with the Whole Foods out there first, and then other independent, smaller chains. Um, Healthy Planet is one that we got a little while ago. And really the biggest news that we've done is almost five months ago now, we got the Log Log listing, which was a hassle in and of itself, um, just going through the process because I had never gone through that before, so half the things they were asking me, not only did I not have the answer, I didn't actually know what they were saying with all of their <laughs> acronyms and like what kind of annual features they wanted, and they have you know so many requirements, and they're a customer that um, they kind of make their own terms, they tell you how much they're willing to pay for whatever you have, and uh, how long of uh, payment terms you have, so basically they make their own rules and you go along with it because they're so good. Um, but we got that and what they did, because we're relatively small, is they gave us a summer program. So we got 14 of their best stores and it was like a three week program really to validate that it would work on the full listing. So it was, in a word, you know, our big break, this big opportunity, how do we not screw this up? Um, because I, especially if you're an entrepreneur, you tend to be very hard on yourself and you're a perfectionist. So that was, you know, quite a lot of stress. You finally get this opportunity of three weeks to move some product. And if it goes well, you get the biggest account in Canada. So we ended up doing, they wanted demos in every store. Uh, the first, there was a London to Ottawa. So my team, um, myself and my two girls who do marketing and social media for me, every day we were at different accounts. Uh, I was downtown Toronto almost every day, in stores, doing demos, trying to move some product, uh, along with actual work and the trade shows we had going on. So for about three weeks it was absolute craziness with you know our marketing efforts, but also just being in these stores, trying to get people uh, to buy a product and hear about it, and then doing really well. We thought, you know, 14 locations in the natural section, we might uh, make about $3,000 over a couple of weeks, and we ended up making 20000 is how much they sold in that period. Uh, in large part because... <laughs> so that was very, not just surprising because I had seen some of the numbers coming in, but I was like, there's no way they can say no now. Um, and they didn't, thank God, because I would have all that work for nothing, but they didn't. Um, but we got the full listing, which is really now 
the end of next month, so week 48 will be in all the Wawa's in Canada, which is its own huge scary step for us uh, as we figure out, you know, the EDI and all of the different uh, systems that we need to work with to make that happen. But we really started, you know, a little over two years ago with an idea when I was still, you know, a student. Uh, I went to a pitch competition and I brought my, like, Tupperware with my product into different people to try. Um, and we've grown from there. We've raised a little bit of money, um, uh, both through, you know, a seed round uh, when we were still figuring out the R&D, which we really leveraged our Whole Foods account for, that we had this customer, they were going to go out, um, and then we later raised a convertible note, um, which helped us a lot with the growth, too, because that's one thing that I found is, if people tell you it always takes much longer than you think it's going to take, and especially if you're doing something more traditional, like not e-commerce, but actually selling in grocery stores, uh, they move very, very slowly. So, like this Loblaws listing I've had, I got the listing officially five months ago, and it won't be actually on shelves until uh, the very end of November. So it really does take about a year or two years before you have any kind of significant account that makes you money. So you have to be able to make some money to keep yourself going in the meantime, and, and you know, gain traction and validation, and if you have Investors, it's important that you're not telling them next month we're going to be making all this money if that's not uh, not what's going to happen. So I found that you know knowing what's going to happen if I had done a lot more research before and known that you know for me they only review my products once a year, so we have like one opportunity during the year usually uh, would have saved me a lot of, a lot of time because we launched just after that schedule ended. Um, but it's come a long way. So now we have just secured uh, Sobe's regional program. Uh, that's going to be going out here in Ontario, and we're hoping that we can do that really well, and we'll also build it up uh, like the Loblaws one went. But we are still a small team. Uh, we're only four people. So we have um, a co-packer now that can make our products for us. Uh, so we took away the in-house manufacturing because we couldn't uh, support it anymore. But as you grow, you build bigger and bigger partnerships, and you validate them. Um, but you don't need to have a crazy team. We are literally four people out at Loblaws whenever we can be doing demos, um, trying to prove that and get that validation. Um, and the plan for us really is that we're hoping by the end of next summer to have a uh, very, very deep market penetration here in Canada as we enter new markets. Um, so that's pretty much my story, where I started, how I am. And I just wanted to end with some of the things that I've learned about pitching, uh, because selling really is everything and has been everything for us, both with you know, selling to investors, what you're doing in a clear way, and then also to customers, um, you know, if you're talking to a retailer, but also when I'm at a demo, how I talk to consumers to try to get them to make a purchase or at least have a better opinion of what we're doing. Um, so the first one, like I mentioned before, is, you know, leveraging what you have. If you have one little customer, you have any sales, you have some kind of validation, leveraging that, and then whenever you can, speaking from a place of authority or expertise. You know, I say a lot that I was a varsity runner, I was an athlete, I, you know, I am vegan, which, you know, means a lot for stores who, um, their shoppers are mostly vegan or athletes or people in health and fitness. So whatever you've done, whether it be academic or maybe job experience or what you've already uh, accomplished in your business, if you can use that to essentially show somebody that you know something about what you're talking about, um, ends up being very helpful. Otherwise, you know, especially if you're young. So if you have anything to leverage, um, whether it be experience or something that you are specializing in, uh, that's always been very helpful for me. The other one being really knowing your numbers and what you're talking about, more so than just, you know, the numbers of how something works. But for us, like, what we didn't know before, which comes across as very naive, is um, basically how our whole distribution channel works. Like if you have a store you want to, or a product you want to sell in a store, you have it manufactured and then it gets warehoused and then it goes to a distributor who takes it to a retailer and everybody along the way wants to make money. Um, so that's not very endearing if you don't know what somebody's talking about when you're trying to sell that. And it's really hard to go back. And the best thing to do really is to talk to people in the industry, like what do I expect in these different scenarios, um, would be very helpful. I wish I had done that more when I started because a lot of meetings, people were asking me questions and not only did I not know, but I did not know what they were asking either. Um, so whatever is industry specific, and I would say the last one is, you know, one week, or two. One is that making sure you have a product that people want, uh, and not just want, but will want and pay money for. Um, 
and that you're not solving a problem that doesn't necessarily exist or isn't severe enough that people will actually give you money for what you're doing. And then to seek out customers that are a really good fit. Like Whole Foods is a good fit. And Loblaws is great because it kind of gives us that validation that it's not just natural. It can be mainstream in normal grocery stores, uh, which means a lot for us as we grow. And the last one is that not everybody will be your customer or your audience or believe in what you're doing or what you're saying or what you're selling, which is okay as long as you know it's not a problem with the product that you know it's not a strong offering or that nobody will want it. Um, but it's okay. A lot of great things started out that way, um, and a lot of great companies where nobody really believed in it or thought that that would ever become something. Uh, so just finding your audience and growing out of there has been the most helpful thing. Um, and everybody has opinions to share around, but. Keeping that faith in yourself, if you're passionate about what you're doing, will take you a long way. Because there will always be people who, um, who don't believe, and that's just the way that it is. But if you hold that in and find kind of your tribe, whether that be customers or your team or retailers or however you go about doing your business, finding the people who support you and believe in you, mentors and advisors too, uh, will take you a long way because it's easy once you start out, and as you start going, it gets much, much harder to keep going. Uh, when you don't have people around you who remind you that you know it's supposed to take this long and it's going to take longer and all these things um, are going to fall apart and then you put them back together. So those would be uh, my tips and I look forward to seeing everyone's pitches and I yeah, can't wait. So good luck with all your pitches. <laughs>